Welcome back to Roy on Rescue. Um, I had a comment actually that came in via email asking about the difference between a sprain versus a strain. And I wanted to address it before the weekend <clears throat> to try to set a few guidelines that might be able to help a person discern whether or not a person actually has a fracture or if they might just have a sprain or a strain. Well, one of the first things um, that you could remember when you're trying to deal with an injury at all and doing a self-assessment is, number one, what was the mechanism of injury? So you're looking at how did it happen? Was it a twisting action? Was it something where I rolled my ankle, that I bent wrong, a joint was bent wrong? Um, or was it something where I had an impact? In other words, there was some type of traumatic injury that was sudden and usually blunt where it hit a bone and potentially caused a fracture. Now, of course, whenever you're dealing with a joint injury, that just simply complicates things because it could be a mixture of the both. You could have a slight fracture with a sprain um, if it has to deal with the ligaments, or you could also have a fracture with sprain and strain. Strain being more the muscles and the tendons, which are the fibrous tissues that connect muscle to bone. So let's take a little bit of a look here at the differences. Bone fractures, and there are lots of different levels of bone fractures. You can have a simple bone fracture, which means there's a fracture, a crack, has not gone all the way through, but has cracked some of the integrity of the bone, um, still is stable, is not um, complicated by it being uh, complete and broken through the skin, but usually still causes severe pain, point tenderness. In other words, you can feel it right where the injury is at. There's bruising, swelling, um, and there's extreme pain when putting pressure on that fracture point. Same thing with a complete fracture, but the fracture is still together. The other would be what we call a compound fracture, where the, the bone has actually broken and poking through the skin. This is a complication because now we deal with outside bacteria potentially being introduced inside the body and into the bone. So this is severe. We need to see uh, EMS 911 and get the person to the hospital for sure when we do this. Then anytime we suspect a bone injury or a fracture, it's my opinion that unless you have ability to completely stabilize that fracture and ensure that it is not going to be moving around or causing more injury, which not most people do have that ability, you should seek 911 or EMS transportation to the hospital. Why? Not because the person is necessarily in jeopardy of severe life-threatening disorders, but because we can stabilize the fracture and make sure that it does not complicate in root, get injured further, and cause more damage. So, from a secondary injury. I'm going to use your judgment there, um, but that that's would be my, my um, advice on that is uh, seek medical attention, EMS, and only if they suggest that you can take the person in yourself would you do that. Um, the difference between that... Uh, fracture and a sprain is probably going to be more of a sprain of the joint. In other words, elbow, wrist, fingers, ankles, knees. Again, this is a joint. This is where you're finding the, the ligaments that are connecting the cartilage and the bones together, uh, keeping everything in line. Um, this is usually caused from a twisting or a strain or an irregular movement uh, sudden or gradual, both could cause it. Again, pain could be swelling, probably not bruising, um, and um, it's very difficult to tell if there's a fracture involved in that. Really, the only way to really tell if there's a fracture at all, period, even if you suspect a bone fracture, is if you had an x-ray, an MRI, or something that could actually look at the bone itself to rule out, is there really a fracture or is there not? So, so here's kind of the rule of thumb on a sprain, strain, or fracture. Treat all bone or joint injuries as though they are potentially fractured or broken. Uh, if the pain worsens over time, causes the person not to be able to behave normally, they cannot bear weight, 
Um, they can't have a full range of motion that is normal to them. Uh, we're going to put some, uh, probably some cold packs uh, over a washcloth onto the affected area to try to decrease swelling, stabilize, which means don't move that, that injured area, and then activate emergency medical services for a second opinion and potentially a transportation to the hospital to get x-rays, to rule out a fracture or a severe injury, and then get treatment to fix it. Uh, of course, with a, a bone fracture, normally it's going to be stabilization over time until the bones knit themselves back together and stabilize themselves. Um, fra uh, a sprain or a strain, <laughs> if it's a tear, it could need surgery. If it's a tear, it might take a long, long time. And even if it's a stretch or a strain, it could take weeks to months to fully recover. There's a whole brigade of different treatments to go with that. I would suggest contacting your medical professional, have it seen, make sure you know what the injury really is so that you get the, the correct treatment for it and get better the right way. The worst thing you could do is continue to go on on, on a severely injured limb or, or broken bone and not get help and it heals incorrectly or causes more problems. So um, the first aid treatment for a sprain or a strain that causes severe pain, uh, inability to walk or perform normally is stabilize, assess for other life-threatening injuries. If there are no other life-threatening injuries, then uh, decide whether you need to access emergency medical services. Uh, if the person is stable enough or if you have the capability and training to stabilize without further injury, decide if you're going to transport. You can always contact your medical professional, your physician, your practitioner prior to even leaving your home if it happens at home to get a second opinion and then follow your medical direction from there. So from Roy on Rescue, I hope this helps. Keep up the good questions. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.